I still have that hunger to achieve an aim that is just jaw-dropping, that inspires and gets people motivated. But also, I want to share that journey here on the channel. We've achieved so much so far this year, but I still feel so far from that goal. And well, we're only a few months away till the end of the year. Sometimes we have moments like this. Wow, absolutely dumpstered on those guys. Right, or on, there's moments like this. Time one. to burn. How to get burned? Oh How to get burned? I got two. Oh, oh my nice god. Nades. Oh my. Oh my god. Oh, nice. oh my. That guy's one. That guy's one. That octane. Sneeze on him. Sneeze on him. Stop peeking weird. <laughs> he wouldn't peek. He had a gold bag game. Oh. Got him. The door closed behind him. I got scared. Please. Flash on the bloodhound pushing. Okay. I'm a pissed off Watson. Come here, Mirage. I'm so mad. Flash. Got him. <laughs> then there's moments in game where it looked like I've never even touched a mouse before. Yeah, the Kanak is on trash. I hit him for 21. I'm garbage. Oof. I'm garbage. Well, I can't. Shoot. He ran this way. Hold on. I'm getting shot somewhere else. Yep. Uh, they're resing right here. Like under under it. Let's hear him. I'm dog water. Don't worry, I'm playing like trash. I haven't played in a couple days. 83. Coming up behind me there. I'm dropping. Ah! Landed on me. Right here. On oh, height. I'm dead. With aim being a mechanical skill like riding a bike, I'm confident that anyone can achieve a strong level of proficiency. But I continue to ask the question, how does one achieve the step above? This year alone, I've already been looking back and I achieved what I thought would be that level of aim. Literally at the start of the year, after a long year worth of grinding Kovacs, I achieved master rank. But then now I'm even a sliver away from grandmaster on aim lab. I also practice immensely in the game, in the test range, with also actual matches of just hot dropping. I'm making this video to highlight some of the changes I have personally made and some things I learned and hope that it helps you out. My goal has always been to really take one step back and the hopes to take two steps forward. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna segue now to a hand camera and I'm gonna explain some things on my screen that I have been doing recently to, to fix some of the issues that I have with my aim. And it's probably what you're going to see in my gameplay from my live streams and what has been a mechanical issue with improvement. Now there's a few things that I have on my screen that I want to share with you guys that I want to talk about in terms of setbacks with my aim. And they're going to make sense. I'm going to overlay again the screenshot from aim lab because I believe actually it does a pretty good job to highlight high level on some of the issues that I have with my aim. Now what I have here is a Grip strength trainer to help with your grip to improve grip strength. I'm gonna explain that in a second. I have the G305, I have the regular, excuse me, G304, G305, and then I have the super light here, and then I have the regular G Pro wireless that I wanna talk about also. It looks like I'm attracting a few hairs as they come over. Now, let us start with some recent events and what I've been trying to improve and achieve. There's two things on my screen as well. On the right here, you can see that it says sky because I've been using the sky pad. And then I'm going to showcase the issues that I have with my aim on screen. So what's interesting that you see from the stats on screen is the issue that I, I, I'm precise. I have good tracking, but my biggest weakness always comes from speed as well as pretty much anything with click timing specifically. Which is interesting because my click timing used to be my biggest strength based on my history on Battlefield. If you know my Battlefield gameplay, I'll showcase just a drag shot and maybe like a clip or two in the background. You'll know that my gameplay on Battlefield happens to be with precision, but it doesn't necessarily require speed whenever you're sniping because everything is all about setup and prediction. And you'll see that also whenever I'm playing Apex, I'll segue to another clip here where I was using the longbow just yesterday and I can just knock out shots that would be, I guess, quote unquote, 
jaw dropping, but at the same time, they're not achieving the level of aim that I am I'm looking to. I, I want to always take it that step further. And that's where I, this year, I've always looked at where I've been complacent. So there's a few factors in when I feel complacent that I've been changing those variables, such as going from a lower sensitivity to a higher one and then trying mouse acceleration, various things, and trying various mouse pads. So right before my fiance, excuse me, so right before my fiance went into labor, I just had bought a mouse pad that was a sky pad. This is actually a very fast mouse pad. I know you probably can't hear it, but the surface is very, it's a hard surface. Now I purchased this because I wanted to garner more speed because my stats based on speed, and I even can acknowledge this and having a flow can be a little bit difficult. So I bought the sky pad because I hadn't used a hard surface in a long time. And what mouse pad actually excelled most for me was utilizing the Artisan Hine mid that happened to be one of my best mouse pads that i've used i've used a lot of them that one happened to highlight most of my speed and that's because the surface was relatively smooth now with that whenever i was at work i used to uh also train my my grip style as well now that's important because i started doing that again because i didn't have as much time on the computer as of late as i normally do now the interesting part is that i also changed the way I grip my mouse. So before you'll know that I, I, I still use fingertip grip. Now fingertip grip, unless the palm is touching the back and it's claw or the palm is going overextended on the mouse and that's a, a palm, a claw, and then anything else in between is just you can call it fingertip or anything modified in terms of fingertip grip style. Now what I've done recently, when I used to play Battlefield way back in the day, I used to hold my mouse fingertip grip, but you'll notice that I used to put my middle finger over the scroll wheel. And that caused a lot of tension on my middle finger and it, I guess over time when I used to play for extended periods, it would kind of feel, not really hurt, it would just feel, I would feel tension. So I went back to holding my mouse normally, like so. Um, I definitely have more of a tug here on the right on holding the mouse specifically. And so I try to maximize and capitalize on that. But what I realized though, is that it wasn't helping with my speed and it wasn't helping with my precision. Midway through during the year, what I used to do is I I saw, I forget who was watching. I don't know if it was tens or somebody. Somebody inspired me to switch up the grip style a little bit back to putting my index finger and middle finger over the mouse one, as you see here on the screen. So with holding it there, I was able to still maintain my fast clicks for speed but because I was already used to this grip style of putting my ring finger over the mouse too, this didn't feel out of the norm. But the interesting thing that, that happens is that your grip strength happens to go first out of pretty much anything that you do. And because when my fiance went into labor, I was spending very little time on Apex Legends, aim training. I think I was only getting like maybe 15 minutes on the computer to aim train. I was barely spending any time. So what I was doing is I was isolating that. Okay, I'm not a doctor, but this is just what I was doing. I, If you're doing stuff like this, I highly urge to be very careful and be very, very safe when you're doing this. If you feel too any sort of pain or anything, immediately stop what you're doing. That's the biggest advice I can give. I was strength, strength train and isolate each of these muscles. Now, one thing that's interesting that I found throughout the year about my aim, and maybe you can relate to this, is I felt very, uh, what's the word? I, I have shaky hands. This, this is one because of anxiety that I had when I was really young. And then two, I just don't think that I my hands were built for mixing precision and speed together. I, I can either have speed or I can have precision and the middle ground for it is just unfortunate where my hands, I think you've seen it in my guides, when I get hungry, my hands get shaky. The first thing to go is always my, my, my hands, unfortunately, which is interesting because then I happen to aim pretty decently in video games, but I kind of power through it. I've always had a very big passion on things that I'm not very strong at to try to seek self-improvement on. I don't always achieve those goals. There's so many things to improve upon, which is why I'm making this video and sharing it. So what I would do whenever I had very little time on the computer is I would isolate these muscles. Now this was way worse. My hand would shake a lot more and I was isolating the ring finger and my th my pinky. And the reason I was doing that is because of the way I grip the mouse because this has more focus on the ring finger and also the pinky, which is happens to be the part that I felt I was very weak on in controlling the mouse. You can also just, you know, regular grip strength train 
my hands, I still feel by doing that are a little shakier, but the goal was to try to remove as much shakiness until I could get back into the computer. But when I found this has actually helped a lot. My pinky is also, uh, feels double jointed. Both of, I've always felt my pinkies uh, kind of pull in really, really quickly. But as I grip strength train, that seems to go away. Now, whenever I do this, I make sure to also do a cool down with it. And this is just like, I guess when I'm having a conversation or I'm, I'm, I know I have downtime, this is my focus and what I try to do to making sure that I kind of you know, maintain your, your more peak performance without having to, and I'm using the bowl now just to kind of roll out, just to make sure that you're keeping your, you're, you're stretching out, that you're keeping, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, you're taking care of your hands. You need to stretch in between. You can't just always be in full tension mode. It's going to hurt your hand. You have to be very, very careful. But it's why as, you know, one gets older, you're always going to find that the first thing that, that goes is going to be your grip strength. And you have to maintain that. And well, as some of you know, my birthday was this year, you know, a pro, uh, past 30 at this point and trying to understand the science because there, there's people who have achieved phenomenal things. I'm going to show a really, really b brief clip of where you see a gentleman who is well beyond his years, but is also one of the fastest gunslingers in the world. I always find that as a good motivation as well, that age can be a barrier and a factor, but at the same time, there are anomalies if there is something that you're passionate about and you really care about. So things that I've covered as I'm talking about the sky pad and the reason I'm using it currently is because it pushes me. I might go back to the artisan hind, but the thing is that I'm using this mouse pad now because I think it'll force me to create even more stability that I'm looking for with my hands. I need speed, but I also need to work on mirroring that speed with precision. And this is helping me a lot. When, when I got the modded G304 that you see here on the screen, I went for a lightweight and I did a review on this. What was interesting is whenever I was at my peak and I hit masters on Voltaic, it was with the G3, uh, the G Pro using that with the Artisan Hine. So I don't have the Artisan Hine on screen here, but the G Pro was whenever I was at my peak. I always felt that going lighter was always the goal. But when I got the ultralight, I really liked the ultralight, but at the same time, lighter doesn't always mean better aim. It always meant more or less the shape. And the reason why I'm using the G304 right now is because while I love the G Pro and the way I'm holding the mouse now, I need a little bit more space on my pinky for now until maybe I can figure out the strength and mobility with it. As I mentioned, the kind of snappiness with my pinky because I think double jointed, whatever the heck that is, it's been there since I can remember. I'm buying myself a little bit more space because there's a lower profile with this mouse. It gives me a little bit more dexterity to kind of move around with this mouse and provide that. With that, I use an arm sleeve still. I, at one point, I stopped using it for a couple months, but because the surface, the way it acts is very, it can get very humid, especially with a hard surface, and especially if a room is warm. If it's cold, that doesn't happen. But I've always found, especially because it glides a bit better and provides, um, I, I try to remove all the tension that I can off the wrist, and that's been that goal. Now, the last thing I'll touch, talk about is the video that I put out about mouse acceleration. Now, this is something I don't know if I'm going to remove one day or if I'm just going to stick with it. Right now, I've pretty much tweaked my settings to what I feel like is quote unquote perfection. At the start of the season, I made a very big miscalculation and I was using an old sensitivity from a few months ago at the launch and I was overshooting like crazy and I was really concerned that my aim was really bad. So what happened is that I loaded the game on Steam. That was the intended goal, but then it wasn't downloading fast enough. I then decided to download an Origin, which actually it did. I had not played an Origin for a couple months, but it had my save profile and it overwritten my Steam one. So I was using the incorrect settings and with mouse acceleration, you'll understand that even a couple of values difference can be massively impactful to your sensitivity because it's very precise in terms of what it does. Now, so that you can compare my stream from a week ago to the stream that I just did yesterday. And hopefully, hopefully, quote unquote, you'll see a difference in terms of uh, aim. Granted, I'm still going to whiff. I'm still going to have a lot of mistakes and you cannot be perfect 10 out of 10 times. But I'm hopefully that this journey and just to recap, realizing at the start of the year, achieving high level rank, achieving master rank and apex multiple times over, and then achieving almost grandmaster and aim level. I'm literally like a sliver of a point off, but because I've played so many scenarios so much, it almost feels like a reset would be even better to do at this point. I find that I cannot increase any reaction time. I need to eat healthier. That's probably another end note on. I need to eat healthier to do better. 
and create some stability in my life. But at the moment, that's been a little bit difficult to achieve uh, until I find a little bit of a balance. I, th I have a few things that are that are going to help improve that in the next couple uh, days, and hopefully I can get kind of back on track with everything I need to do. I'm kind of making this video as a checkpoint as well. So whenever I look back at the end of the year, to look at the end of the year and see where I had setbacks and things kind of change within my life and curious and how I can make those improvements. So for the time being, I'm going to use a Skypad and the G304 just to improve my stability with speed, as well as making sure that whenever I click, I'm going to turn off the mouse so it doesn't mess up the recording, that I don't have a lot of pressure to where it messes things up. The pressure that I put on the mouse, making sure that the clicks are light enough to making sure that it doesn't impact my movement. Um, hopefully that will remove the shakiness and highlight the shakiness. And then I think what I'm going to do is go back to the regular G Pro, not the ultralight. The ultralight feels like it provided a little bit too much shakiness, but go back to the G Pro and the Artisan Hine in the long run, maybe. Because those that was my best pairing that I've had out of all the 15 or 14 plus mics that I've ever owned. Now, in the meantime, I will still continue to grip strength train because I probably am not going to have the amount of time that I would like at the computer. In, in fact, this past season on Apex, I've had the least amount of time that I've ever had on the computer. I wasn't even able to, I didn't even have the time to hit diamond or master rank just because I just, I mean, there was no time. So in the meantime, I'm going to isolate these muscles. I'll let you guys know how it goes. This has worked very well before, but you can even see the shakiness that I have. The shakiness needs to go away because if I'm shaky under just doing a little bit of pressure like that and it could be also because one i'm not having eaten before this recording but nonetheless i need to get rid of the shakiness because that's going to be impactful for my speed and trying to match that with precision granted you don't need that level whenever you are you know aiming but at the same time having that level of strength is very very important especially whenever you have long segues of aiming and practicing so this video is a little longer than i anticipated that it would be but i I really wanted to share this progress. I, I feel like we've we've come a really long way, and I was even practicing last night with the G7 Scout in the test range, trying to hit a specific routine and trying to improve, but you know, it, it's it's difficult, and it's why I'm sharing the journey with you guys, and I'm ho hopeful, hopefully, that somebody finds some resources here on the channel, as well as me talking about my journey. And the thing is that I have constant setbacks. Everything that I have done every time I change a mouse, my aim takes one step back and then it goes two steps forward. I change a mouse pad, my aim takes two, one step back and then two steps forward. Sometimes it's two steps back, especially when it takes time away. And then I'm trying to get back to the two steps forward. Um, so that's why I keep changing things so I can teach and be better equipped. So I know pretty much at least everything there is to know about aim and then achieving the goal that I'm looking for. Because every time whenever I hit my peak with the G Pro and the Artisan Hine, I always found that I wished that I could break a plateau faster. And I want to share how to break those plateaus. And I, as you can tell, the biggest way to break the plateaus was identifying a weakness and then honing in on that weakness. And to end on this video, my weakness is speed and click timing and maintaining stability. It's not tracking. It is not actually being precise because I can be precise and 100% accurate if a lot of the time. The problem is the speed that I'm looking for to allocate with it. The speed is something that is probably the hardest that I have, I've had to overcome at the moment because the faster I go, the more, I guess the, I would explain it, your adrenaline kicks in. If your adrenaline kicks in, you have shaky hands, that makes it really, really hard to aim. And unfortunately, as a child, I was I had a lot of anxiety growing up. I, I'm sure we all do, but my level was uh, happened to be if I was in front of a certain amount of people, then I would get sick. So that was my level of anxiety and something I've always been battling for as long as I can remember. But nonetheless, I, you know, do YouTube. I'm, I always push. I always find that me pushing against things that I am uncomfortable with have been ways for me to grow the most. So hopefully you find some also passion and excitement through that. Thank you again so much for watching the video. Hopefully this is an insightful video and I look forward to seeing you guys all in the next video.